Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a video for you today, obviously, on the Dark Timber Honey Badger. This thing belongs to a very generous gentleman named Daryl. Oh, sorry, Darren. I'm sorry, brother. Darren. Darren lent me his Honey Badger to make a couple sheets that I could sell on eBay. And as repayment, I said I would make him a couple of sheets for him to use uh, for his knife, obviously. So, um... It turned out that my time was extremely limited and I was unable to get to all of the sheets that I wanted to make for this. But I did keep my end of the bargain and decided to make him a couple sheets. So I didn't get any out for uh, ready to ship or anything like that for sale. But he's going to get a couple sheets and I'm really, really excited about these. So I'll show you this one first. You can see this one in the background and I'm going to explain it all in a minute. This one is Black Basket Weave with Cryptek Neptune. You can see I've done a reinforcement plate on both sides. It has a Sunto Clipper Compass, an Exotac Fire, uh, sorry, Exotac Nano Striker XL, and it carries on a leather dangler set up for right-handed carry. The fit on this thing is just wonderful. It doesn't have much of a click, but boy, it's in there really good. At the same time, it's a very easy one-handed draw. So as you draw this thing out of your sheath, Boom, it's just free and clear, ready to be used. As for the attachments on here, so the Exotac Nano Striker XL, this is a nice little compact fire striker and ferro rod in one system. I'm giving this to him as well as the Sunto Clipper. These are mine, gifting to him now. Um, normally you'd see shock cord on my setups for this, but what I'm trying out lately is a slightly tighter tube so it's a little bit harder to get out, but what you want to do, I'm recommending you just brace your thumb against the, uh, the back of the holder for it, and then use your forefinger to pull the tail up flush with the bottom of the holder. Just bring it up as far as your finger will push it. And then you have these textured, um, you have this textured uh, shaft that you can grab onto, and it's really, really easy to pull it out from there. So all you have to do, assist that upward, and then grab it from the textured uh, finish there and it's free and clear. As for the clipper, this is a floating plate that I started doing recently. All it is is a little flat plate up on some spacers and that gap behind just leaves room for the clipper portion of this compass. You can see the clipper in the light and then the rest of the compass. So you slide the clipper underneath that plate and then the tooth on the main body of the compass will seat down into this quarter inch drill hole right there. You can hear it click in sometimes. It just made a little tiny click there. So it's in there fairly secure, but all you have to do to get it out is kind of lift the bottom of it and start sliding it up. So a good whack would completely dismount that sucker. So you do have to be a little bit aware, be a little bit careful. Um, but one thing that you can do if you want to add some extra security without making it look funky or anything like that is you can just take even just like a piece of paper just a little piece of paper and fold it in half and you can stick it in behind the compass and that just adds a little bit of pressure and keeps that sucker wedged in there so um, yeah there are a lot of different ways that you can do that <sighs> excuse me guys just anything thin and flat you can put down back there and it should add a fair amount of uh, resistance now so that it's in there just a little more secure. I wouldn't be worried about it carrying it like it is, so this is how I'm shipping it out. Uh, I'm just giving you that in case that's a concern for you, Darren, um, what you could do to add a little bit of resistance. All right, so that's pretty much this sheet. And the one that I'm wearing, this is a first for me. This is actual alligator hide. This is genuine alligator. Um, I've had it for about six months and um, I, I've been waiting to do a project for it. I just haven't had the occasion yet and I really wanted to do something special for him. Uh, so I decided I would bust that out, use some of it, and uh, hopefully he likes this. So I think it came out really well. There were a couple little learning things for me, one of which was the thumb ramp. So you can see this one has a traditional thumb ramp where you can really get your whole thumb against that. Very comfortable, very smooth. Um, this one, I was unable to do that. I did try to do it, but then trying to bend the leather when I was putting it on, it wouldn't go. 
So what I had to do was smooth out the top again of the sheath, and um, which was a fiasco because I had glue drying on the outside of the sheath and the underside of the leather. Uh, so that, that was a real pain in the butt. But I got it working, so I flattened out the top again, and then I adhered the leather, got that all done, and I had to reheat the Kydex, and I slipped in a piece of uh, craft wood and basically just put in like a triangular groove on top of the handle, sanded it off at an angle to create a little thumb ramp, and it works really nicely. Um, it is very comfortable, in spite of not being a traditional thumb ramp, but it does work really nicely, so gives you plenty of uh, material to push off of. The draw on this one is even smoother than the other. I'm so pleased with how this one came out. I'm, I'm just, I'm in love with this sheath. So, one of the other things with it is that the edges of, uh, of the alligator leather didn't have the same properties as the edges of cowhide. So when you slick them, it takes quite a bit more work with alligator leather to get the edges to slick up. So I got it pretty good. Um, they actually show a little bit of a gray color to them. And that's probably just a product. I'm sure this is dyed. Obviously, there's no alligator out there that's like the blackest color in the world, I don't think. Uh, normally, they're like a greenish, brownish. So I'm sure this is all dyed anyway. And maybe that's just a, a byproduct of the dye, that grayish color there. But I actually thought, instead of putting some black edge coat on it, which was my initial reaction when I saw the, the color difference, um, was my, my decision ultimately was to leave it because it really matches the handle scales well. That color, for whatever reason, is like, it's like the perfect accompaniment. You can see how well that goes with these handles. So that was just kind of serendipity there. Um, and then as far as the color of the Kydex here, this is actually foliage green, which, again, matches the handles exceptionally well. I'm not sure what the actual color on the handles is, if it's a gray or if it's a green or if it's a tan. It's kind of in that uh, really vague color. Uh, it's in a really weird spot on the color spectrum for my eyes. So perhaps Darren can comment down below and let us know. These are custom handle scales. These are not the factory scales. Uh, he did send the factory scales to me so that I could put them on when I make the um, the other sheets that I was just going to have on eBay or whatever. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't have time to, to make those sheets, so I never even removed these scales. But in any event, these things are really sweet. I'd love to know who made them. I don't know if he told me or not, but I don't think so. I don't remember. Um, so, in any event, this guy has a big six inch by half inch ferro rod on it. It was the ferro rod that came on his other sheath, so now he can rock it on this guy as well. And uh, instead of shot cord, it already had this paracord slip knot on it, so all you do is just slip it down over like that. I am going to include some shot cord in the package in case he'd like to tie it and make uh, make a different kind of setup, but this works just fine. It just takes a little bit longer to use. So, in any event, I'm a huge fan of the Baldrick system, and uh, I wanted this one to be a little bit more special, so I, I set it up as a Baldrick. He told me just choose whatever I want for colors and method of carry and setup and all that. Um, just make them make them how I would want them. So I did exactly that. I really love this one. I like them both a lot. I mean, any sheath that holds the honey badger nicely is going to be a friend of mine, but this one is just um, really a cut above with this alligator leather. So super pleased with that. One thing, I stamped it down here where there's a lot of texture cluster going on on the actual skin. And so it is a very clean stamp, but it's super hard to actually see it on camera and it's kind of hard to see it from more than a couple feet away so unfortunately that almost just looks like the the pattern of the skin just gets really tight down there which happens on the on the gator obviously but um, yeah it is what it is so it does look really nice up close it just doesn't show from far away like I would want it to um, oh and one cool thing I did do with this one is in case he decides that he would rather carry it as a dangler, I set up my baldric point up here like this. So 
normally when I'm carrying a baldric, I would have it flip down just because it brings the center of gravity in slightly. But when I'm carrying it as a dangler, you just flip that up, maybe detach the D-ring, um, or the, uh, the sling, sorry. And then he can just take the screws out of this dangler and run it right onto this guy. So it's really easy to swap those out. Um, I hadn't really thought about it before, but using black cowhide with alligator leather might be some kind of faux pas I don't think it looks bad it's just not not optimal but that's what we got to work with so in any event I'm just super happy with these I would love your opinions down below guys if you own or have ever handled a dark timber honey badger please comment down below for that matter if you've handled any of Pete Kohler's work I would love to hear your experiences with it what you thought of it everything, uh, aesthetics, function, all of it. To me, this is just one of the most beautiful knives I've ever seen. It just, it looks so fierce and, uh, and beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really a work of art. So, uh, Pete, if you ever happen to see this, man, I am so appreciative of your work and I hope someday that I can own a few of these pieces because they are truly beautiful. And I have no doubt that this thing is extremely functional as well. But, Alright guys, that's what I got for you right now. Let me know what you think of the knife. Let me know what you think of these two sheaths. Let me know how I did on my first time using alligator leather. If you've seen any actual alligator leather out there on sheaths like this over Kydex, if you've seen that before, uh, I would love you to point me in the direction of it so I can check it out too. Uh, just to compare, see where the, where the bar is set, I guess across the market. I've seen quite a bit that was advertised as alligator leather and from afar might look like alligator leather but it's actually embossed cowhide um, and usually embossed cowhide is actually a really really low quality leather that's been embossed. Um, there are exceptions to that but almost everything I've ever seen or handled has been pretty much that. So this real alligator hide is, uh, is really cool to look at feels amazing feels super kind of hard and durable it's a totally different feel from regular leather and I'm definitely going to be doing some more with this so if you're interested let me know contact me I'd love to do another alligator leather sheath and uh, yeah all right guys that's what I got sorry I just rambled I tried to end it like three times this time it's for reals so let me know what you think of the sheets comment down below tell me all that stuff like if you like oh man Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate you tuning in, guys. Stick around for the next one. God bless.